why the video keeps cutting out, but it does. Just kind of doing all the, yeah, this belt is like torn in some areas, which is common. Trying to get some WD-40 on this line so that when I pull the cable, it will actually pull some of that WD-40 in with it. some on these bolts in case I end up having to tear apart this thing. Yeah, there's quite a bit of shit up under here. I'm not really too worried about that right now. We're actually gonna leave this off. I might end up clear coating it. I'll probably just kind of set it on there. And I'm probably gonna order a carb pit tonight. 13 bucks won't kill nobody. zip tie with. There we go. So I also kind of popped the thing out of its place in the first and I kind of bent it too. How does this thing even work? It's like not even, I guess this just engages a gear, clearly. gonna sit there and run it forever um, until I have a new carb for it. I'm not even gonna go out of my way to just buy a new jet. I'll just get one of those generic carburetors with a new jet in it. Which those generic carburetor kits come with a fuel filter as well. Which Tecumseh's could definitely use those. Which hopefully this one also smokes a little bit. I think a little bit of that's you know gasoline smoke and then a little bit of it's Slightly worn out rings, possibly. But, um, it's alright. I mean, clearly the thing was abused, but I think it's got room to be saved. Um, even if it, it does have sp smoke a little bit, I'm alright with that, because I just wanted to come so. Um, primer still doesn't work, so that's another reason to get a new. Uh, carburetor and the generic ones that you can buy for this are actually have replaceable primers. You can't replace the primers in these um, these ones. So. Uh, and I think the kit that I'm going to get also comes with a new air filter as well. Doesn't come with any fuel line or anything. This linkage also doesn't want to work properly. So that's another thing I have to figure out. I don't know why it doesn't want to work, but. It doesn't. 
they really don't make it easy to get this filter out. Here's the fuel line. That is a new piece of fuel line. But yeah, this piece back here just doesn't want to... to make it run properly. That's how you adjust it, is bending that thing either forward or backwards, one of the two. At least that's what I've seen. I'm gonna clean up the muffler too. I think I might still paint it, just because the little bit of paint that's left is very faded, and then there's all these, all these and, and I wanna wire wheel that, and then it'll just be bare metal with the little bit of paint that's left. The sides are actually really solid still. Not very bad. And the bottom of it as well is pretty decent. This thing doesn't even have an exhaust side or carburetor side. To oh dear, it's leaking fuel. Um, well, that's not good. The moment I did that, it just started spewing fuel all over the place. Um, well, that's not good. started leaking fuel. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. That's another reason I get a new carburetor. <laughs> I think that float, that uh, bowl gas would think of that. Can I at least take the back ones? So we can take a look underneath. It does have a blade. Oh, it leaks that way too. I don't even care. Let me take a look. Yeah, and it's actually pretty solid under here. Could definitely still stand to be wire wheel, but the blade is dented to shit, but I can probably fix that. Then the transmission does function. It just gets stuck in gear. So you'll be moving with this thing, and then it'll just stay going. Probably not the safest thing. So I'll probably have to pop these wheels off and probably pop this cover off as well. And I'll put it inside for that 5 sixteenths. I think the 5 sixteenths is just sitting on this one. Nope. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get one of those kits for this thing. Just cause why not? They're cheap, and even if this thing does have more rings, even with a mower with more rings, you can still get use out of them, believe it or not. Maybe not the most use, but you can get use out of them. They'll just be smoky and maybe not have as much power. Could also need a new head gasket, probably both. Because I know these Tecumsehs go through their rings, their connecting rods, um, and head gaskets. And the head gasket is more of a bridge and strap and quantum engine thing. It's the one reason I use these quantum engines is because that's the only thing that's really bad about them is their head gasket not being the best thing. Placed. And this spring is rusted together, so that's probably not ideal. Oh, this is sticky. That could be our problem. This is kind of a sticky thing. Pulley is rusted to hell, too. and the wheels too. This has the same tread style as my rally. Yeah, it does. Weird. From around the same time, realistically. I think I'll get some WD-40. We'll try and uh, kind of just spray the general area here. Might end up having to drop the transmission. We'll see. Guess it's really not a transmission. The 
gearbox. Just, it's got gears in it, so I just call it a gearbox. Um, I would use coil. I don't know if this is even going to work, so I'm not going to waste coil. We'll waste the D40 because it's not only easier to find locally, but it's also cheaper. Coil can get up to like $20 a can. Okay, it's time to get back to work on this piece of junk. Um, I think the last thing I did with it yesterday was just wipe it off one more time in some areas. And that's about it. Um, I ordered a new carburetor for it um, for eight bucks, eight dollar carburetor. And I ordered two of them, so the total was like 16. Um, so I ordered two, one for this and one for this. One nice thing is now this one's gonna have an idler screw that I can adjust. Um, this one's got oil all over it because it's got worn rings, but I also overfilled it with oil, so that didn't help either. But this one is the one that needs a little bit more work in terms of being able to be used. That one, I think once the new carburetor's here, it should function. It'll just be a smoky one because the rings are worn out on the green one. I think the main reason it was having so much blow by and so much smoke coming out of the vent tube was because I overfilled it with oil. And overfilling it with oil definitely caused it to do what it's done here. And I overfilled it by quite a bit. Oh, no, I guess I really didn't. I think some of it might have leaked out. I mean, I guess I really didn't overfill it. You know, I really didn't overfill it. I'm still going to try tossing the uh, new carburetor on it once it arrives, because yeah, it, that's all came out of the blow-by tube, which vents through here. Um, so it's going to need another good cleaning. But I think even if it's got worn out rings, um, I also have to steal a bolt from the head to put on that one, because that one was missing one of the bolts. So i got to find a different bolt to slam into this piece of junk. I also have to steal the plug from it. But um, I think it has a little bit of hope still, even if its engine's clearly worn out, but it could still be a good beater mower. Same with this one. But this one, I think it'll still, this one will be a little, I think it'll turn out a little nicer than that one in terms of the engine. That one, the deck's in a little bit better condition, I would say. But, um, so first things first, we're just going to start this thing. I already changed the oil on this one, but it got dark really fast, oddly enough. Oh dear. Oh dearie me. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> well, I definitely overfilled that one with oil. Well, one second, guys. I am so confused right now. Because I was not reading what has happened that much yesterday. Yeah, no, no, I really, what the frick? Now it's reading it a little bit more over full, but not too much. That's so weird. I don't know what's up with that, with both of these. are just giving me inaccurate readings. That's weird. I don't like it. <laughs> Since it's, I fucked up the main jet, it just sits there and dumps a bunch of fuel into it, so it goes through fuel like crazy. 
Although it's actually gonna help in this case because it's cold out and it won't crack the block because it's giving you so much fuel. Whoa! Since the it's technically just dumping a bunch of mist of gas into the chamber, so um, it's gonna keep. It, I won't crack the block at least. Um, I need to go get gas today probably as well. Because I'm um, kind of running low. Just a little bit. This one, the carburetor's messed up more than just me messing up the jet. It also, primer, doesn't really work. And then this bowl seal is also bad. So. starting fluid like in bulk off of online or something. And this primer isn't doing anything at all, so thing leaked oil all over the place too. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. So that's also a problem. Wonder where it's leaking it. Definitely not out of the head gasket. So it's leaking out of the Oh yeah. Oh we're definitely leaking out of the uh, oh no. That's coming from somewhere else. Leaking it from actually. Here's a leak of decent puddle of oil. I don't think the block is cracked. I feel like it wouldn't run at all. <laughs>
actually running better than it was yesterday. But I think the front of the sump seal is where our leak is. I'm not really worried about that. It's the type of leak that's stop leak additive would probably fix, which I already put some in this. I don't know how much you guys just missed, but um, I actually think I found where the, it's leaking. I, I think it might be leaking at the uh, sump seal. And that's where a lot of the buildup is. So your sump seal is at this line right here, and I think it's just leaking at the front of that. Which would make sense as to why there's just shit loads of buildup up in it, under there. You can't even see. There's at least a quarter inch of buildup. It's also leaking just like the other one was right at the uh, dipstick, which seems to be common with these Tecumsehs. They actually had it running better than I've ever had it running before, um, surprisingly. Usually I can't get it to idle up or anything because I fucked up the main jet. I already have two new carbs on the way because both of these have the same issue because I messed up the jets on both of them but yeah what i was thinking about doing today is ripping this engine off the deck and i'm gonna work on fixing up this deck and um yeah but i almost just don't feel like doing that <laughs> but i feel like it kind of needs to be done because this deck is definitely just getting worn out. There's a lot of rust. I might even have a tan color close to this if I really wanted to make it look like this again, but I have way better colors that I could use. I actually did have this cover off. I can't remember if I filmed that yesterday or not, but I did have it off. And it's, um... It's a little worn out up under there. It could definitely use a um, new gear belt. And it freaking, the bowl on it leaks fuel, so I, no matter what, if I tip this thing over, it leaks gas. But yeah, so I don't, I don't know where, where we should go next. I'm probably gonna take the head off of it see how everything is doing under there. But I have a whole new, just, just the, the carb. I have just the carb on the way. It's one of the generic ones. But I've had good luck with the generic part seller people and the parts themselves. Matter of fact, I have a box of Briggs and & Stratton Quantum Engine parts that should be arriving today. I've already put, let's see. My rally has generic filter and seals and a fuel valve and filter on it. And then this Toro, this, the set I got for that came with one of those automatic joke, choke carbs. I'll be able to use everything but the carb on this, but I put the carb on the brute here. And then the root carb went on this for a while because the carb on this was shit. But then this also got a brand new carburetor. The automatic choke doesn't work on this, so I just have it stringed so that it's the choke doesn't work, or so that the choke can't engage. Otherwise, it would just sit there and be a dog and dump a bunch of black smoke. Um, this one also got fuel filter that leaks, um, and the fuel valve. I found out those fuel filters. This fuel filter is literally hollow. There's nothing in there. I don't know if those are just meant to put something, you know, like you know, maybe just. Um, put your own material in there, or if the way it's designed, 
just shit falls to the bottom and then you pop it open every once in a while or what but um and also got a whole new air filter all of that for um 15 bucks so whole fuel system overhaul kit basically and it comes with a new plug so that's nice then this thing is getting the same i just got two of the same carburetor one for this and one for that because i do want to save this one and clean it up as well both of them would be cool to have for the business except this one would be more for the you know nicer yards and then that one would be more for the yards that are just totally lumpy and shit because that one's a little more nimble this one would be good for yards like mine where it's just kind of flat and not much to them mine's kind of a hot mess right now take that back let's see if they'll start back up for us i also got they're not going to arrive till like july but um, i also got two brand new pull cords for three bucks two for three bucks they're only a buck a piece and they're shipped directly from china so, but for a buck i figured i might as well try them out because this one could use a new pull cord that's the one for my lawn boy it's just getting ready to rip in some areas and then my brute could also use a new one this one's starting to really fray in a lot of areas it's just kind of getting worn out this one is the one that goes to work every day should probably start taking a different mower to work for a while the brute's kind of been getting abused black smoke, so I definitely fucked up that jet. Yeah, it just keeps going to full throttle for whatever reason. But, um, yeah, you can see it runs. It just revs up right away, so I don't want to run it for too long and cook the engine. Because I don't mind revving my Briggs and Stroud. I don't mind revving the tits off of those, but, um, these Tecumsehs are a little more fragile, so. Mostly those newer Tecumsehs are the non-reliable ones. These eager ones were actually pretty tough, but still, I'm not taking any chances. I had to change the oil on my truck. Um, obviously, I can't drive it, but... The family drives it. I've driven it once in a field. But yeah, it hit two year. Whole front end's kind of beat to hell on it. But luckily we had another old mountaineer that we were able to rob parts off of. But yeah. After hitting two year, this thing is really seen better days. All of the airbags were popped. Um a work truck it's kind of what the family uses if they know they're going to be doing something miserably dirty or just rough um all those fire the, all those rocks that we were using for our fire pit for a while this hauled those all of these rocks is what that poor truck had to haul they're pretty big rocks. And the only reason it's in the garage is because it needed an oil change and a new oil filter. And it needs new tires. It already has two new front hubs. <laughs> All the stabilizer links on this thing broke in the crash, so there's just bolts for stabilizer links. You guys can probably see. That's a bolt. Run. Random bushings we had lying around. And it actually has worked. This thing has gotten loads of miles put on it since heading to the air. Now this one back here was the one that I had to do. This is another piece of, I used a piece of all thread. I don't know if you guys can tell. And then bushings that we have laying around. 
washers, bolts, and it actually works. This thing runs quite nice. Rides down the road really nice, actually. But it needs an alignment. You can see a lot of things are crooked back here. Um, obviously, it's got its fair share of rust, especially in spots like this. But, you know, it could, it could use some rust removal, especially along the fenders here. Um, I probably will start tackling it soon here. That's, that's not where I, because I did have to park it once out front and it was in the driveway and it slipped and I hit the, I hit the side of the garage. Um, right here. That was my fault there. So. And then, yeah, there's just a bunch of shit in the back of it right now. It's kind of being used as a storage unit. <laughs> it's only been in here for a few days, but I already changed the oil on it. I put some pretty good quality oil in it, actually. Put, this takes a semi-synthetic blend. You can do a lot of damage if you run either full synthetic, synthetic, or no synthetic. You have to run semi-synthetic, um, ten or uh, five W thirty. And uh, yeah, I got a, I got an oil change. I spilled oil all over the place because. Um, the uh, drain plug uh, was so tight, and when I was loosening it up, I wasn't really sure when it was going to finally break loose. And then it broke loose, and then I'm like just loosening up more, and then it just flew right out. And I actually lost the drain plug in the oil, so I just shoved my hand in a big old bucket of oil, because this thing holds five quarts. It has the uh, 4 pino V6. I think it has like 300 horsepower. Well, sand build up everywhere. But yeah, we're gonna be putting new tires on it here soon. Cause it's a work truck for my dad. He drives quite a few miles every day and he has to use his pickup truck right now that he doesn't really want to use. Cause not only is it not as comfortable, but um, it's also supposed to be our good family truck and this thing was supposed to be the beater truck for everyone and it's kind of just been sitting in here and he's been using the pickup truck and now that thing's getting worn out parts it needs u-joints so he's sitting there we're sitting wearing that one out more and more because we can't find tires for this yeah uh, it's more or less the rim size that this thing uses that's making it hard to find tires around here and we don't want to buy brand new tires like, screw that. <laughs> That's gonna really... Brand new tires for this thing. I mean, take a look. Does it look worth it to you? So, yeah. But, um... My button came on the zipper on this jacket. It's broken. So, yeah, I'm take a look underneath. It's going to leak gas either way. Matter of fact, I'm wondering if I should How much gas did I put in here? Yeah, not much. Let's see if I can get it to run at a lower idle and then I'll let it run dry so I can tip it over without having gas spill over. <laughs> Might have been all it had in the carburetor. Yeah, there's not enough to even reach the net. So, man, this tank is still a little bit dirty. You can see water deposits in there. So, things that need to be fixed engine wise, it's going to be so much easier to work on this engine once it's off the deck. It's probably still gonna leak some gas, but not too much. Okay. So up underneath, I instantly noticed that this is oily too, which also gives me vibes that um, 
this the dips the drain plug is also oily so that needs to be cleaned up but I instantly got vibes that the front of the sump still is what's leaking just because of all the build up right here which that'll hopefully be able to get cleaned up easier once this is off the deck um but you can see this thing's actually really solid underneath we got a lot of surface rust around the edges but not really actually um but that's paint right there <laughs> that is the color of this mower um clearly this thing was used maybe 20 times and then just sat in moisture for a while but the moisture wasn't getting held on because there's not grass i'm sure the rust is worse underneath where all the grass is because that's what happens when you don't scrape the bottom of the deck look how weird this is like i, I it, it's weird it's a weird design get it far away from the spark plug because these things can kick over i've even gotten them to stay running with the spark plug like wire over here in the spark plug right here you don't have to believe me but i have witnessed it so get it far away from the spark plug or as, at least as far as you can oh wow yeah look at all this grass so First things first, we need to get this blade off of here. It's got good compression, that's for sure. Definitely has good compression. We need to get this blade off. It looks like maybe a 916s, 5.8s maybe. Now, the inside of my toolbox is probably wet because that's just my luck. You know, we're gonna use an impact anyways, so we're not even gonna use my sockets because mine aren't impact. So. Whoa, I almost fell. I almost biffed it. Okay, well, 916, what would that be in metric? Probably, that would be 14 maybe. Because we only have metric impact sockets, sadly. We're working on getting some standard ones, but there's 14. Half inch, so we're gonna have to use my half inch impact that I just bought. I actually bought it locally, it was Facebook Marketplace. Um, I had to um, take it apart, re grease everything, um, and just clean it out. It was really dirty in there, it had been used commercially, so because that's kind of what these are made for. easy to get sockets on these things. Have to like find something to push that pin down so that the socket can slip over onto it. There. In fact, I might have to set you guys down because this thing really is scary. normally use my 3 8 impact, but this is a half inch drive socket, so. Alright, we'll see if I can do it with the, I don't know what setting is on, but the third setting. Oh wow, that was not tight at all. Probably didn't even need the impact. Doing it slowly, because I don't want to We might end up just replacing this bolt. I might have a bolt that would work. Because that's fucking shit seen better days. Washers, too. They both seem better. I would probably put stainless ones on as well. Ooh. Okay. Blades, actually, it's a little beat up, but I mean, I can file that. Make it look pretty decent. Now, before we do. taking the engine off I need to figure out a way to get this belt off of here and maybe even the shaft although I really don't need to take the shaft off I'm sure it's just solid on there 
can sometimes try popping them with a hammer and that'll loosen them, but it never really works. Sometimes it'll work, but more often than not, it won't. Well, it didn't leak any gas, so it clearly was ran dry. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah, before we need to disconnect any cables. So let's get that thing off there. Yeah, that blade actually looks pretty solid, pretty functional. Do have more O rings in case we end up needing those throughout the process. Might end up trying to, and I see it's leaking oil from this area as well as the dipstick. So I am really wondering if it might be leaking at the main. <laughs> if it might be leaking at the main sump seal. Front of it, anyways. Because it's not totally over full with oil. It's got a little bit more than it needs to have in there, but I kind of wanted it to be a little overfull just because the engine's worn out. There's nothing wrong with having a little bit more oil. I only put this cover back on last night because I just didn't want to lose it. But screw for it, anyways. Could have just put it in there, I suppose. But... about getting the belt off. Um, it is possible to do. Belt off because the first thing you can really do. Alright, so what I ended up doing is just taking off the pulley and just, you know, doing that maneuver. Make sure we don't lose that. Now, we'll go ahead and tip it back over. Really easy. Might have a belt in better condition. I think the one that I have here is a little bit too big. Yeah, it's probably a little too big. Definitely too big, actually. Thank 
disconnect. The lines. Um, this will start out by taking off this one. Now, sometimes these can be the brats to get out. Sometimes be the hardest part. It's old, brittle ass cables. We need to get that zip tie off there. Um, channel locks. I need my channel locks. I have found out that channel locks can easily. Oh, there's my actual flathead. Jesus. I found the channel locks are actually pretty decent for breaking zip ties. If you can find them. <sighs> Tartar sauce. Oh, <laughs> yeah, see, that's me, guys. That's me. And keep trekking that. And basically, what you do is you just grab the end and it does it like that. Now we need to get. Oh, well, that should be really simple. Careful not to break your line, because this line actually does function, and the safety mechanism works in general, so I'm try not to break it, because half the motors I find, the safety mechanisms never work. Alright, there, I think the line should be just about ready to come off now. and help fix this up anymore I'm even more I might try putting it in a bucket to soak it in some oil. What's going on here? Why is it getting all dirty? Oh yeah. I'm making things worse. Oh dear. Screwed you guys up, haven't I? <laughs> there we go. Okay. Wondering if it was even that dirty. It just kind of randomly went perfectly good without nearly crying that hard. What do I, well, okay, we got the cable off. That's the only, or no, we still need to get self propelled cable off. Now, this one might not be nearly as easy. I wonder if I should just take the whole self propelled mechanism off. And then, because that would make it easier to paint the handles properly. I think we'll probably just do that.
trying to come out. I might end up just replacing that. Alright, so the cable itself is released from the machine. Once we get this. I know I keep setting you guys down on that. free to release the engine. Now, I don't remember what size. So are they, could, be, could be 14. Probably not. No. 13. Should work. They're most likely half inch. Just like the bolt was most likely 9 sixteenths. See, and then it's the same story getting it off. I can't more yeah. oh. There is a difference between an impact socket and a non-impact socket, believe me. I have learned the hard way. I tried using a normal one on an impact once. My 3 8 impact, I tried using one of my normal sockets on. That socket got red hot. Like lava, red hot. And got so hot that it cracked so it's not too loose judging by how loose the blade was I'm assuming this is We'll get lucky and not crack any bolts. I have to sit you guys down for the last one because I need to make sure I have to lift the engine up, otherwise, I'll fuck up the bolts. Alright, our engine has been released. Look at all this build up here. Alright, so. <laughs> um, 
Oh shit, I didn't even need to release the, um... I didn't even need to take the self propel cable off. I didn't even think of that. Because it's not like it's connected to the engine anyway. So there, our engine is off now. And ready to be worked on. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking it's leaking up front here at that main sump seal. So, might end up having to um, take the bottom sump off and fix that seal. Use some RTV up front there and try to at least slow the leak down. But, um, yeah, I mean, that actually went quite smoothly. So, um, yeah, I mean, it'll just basically need to be cleaned really well, and then I'm gonna start working on, um, doing a wire wheel on it. Wire wheeling all the bad rusty spots, but I've had decks way more rusty than this, and I can say that because I've had ones stand on them like this, they'll sit there and bend because there's so much metal missing. Um, so this one's still solid, there's no holes in it. Um, but, uh, I still needed to take this line off because I want to be able to get all that quite a bit of rust from that. So we will try and put this um, thing back in here for now so we can avoid losing it. So either I'll just leave that leak up front as it is, I mean, and then maybe just try and uh, smear some RTV on the outside of it or I don't know because I'm pretty certain that doing a some seal replacement on this thing would be quite pointless just because it's not a perfect running engine at all but yeah whatever color i paint the deck this will also get painted because you can see they're color matched so so that all needs to be cleaned i might end up just dropping the transmission out of it for now Wheels like to lock up. So. Wheels are locked up for some reason, so I'm gonna need to figure that out. And this engine, I'm probably just gonna sit on my pallet inside the garage, not inside the house. So, the oil in this thing, I will be draining out, but I'm going to put the same oil that's in it back in it, which you can get it mad at me all you want, if you would like, but um, I'm doing that because I just put this oil in yesterday. It's gotten ran maybe three times since then, and no load put on it, and yes, the oil's dark, but that usually happens with Tecumseh's. The oil's still functional. The don't judge it by its color. That's racist, so. You know. I'm gonna set it right here. And I'm probably gonna rip the carburetor off of it just now and have it ready for um for the new one. So this new carb. Also this thing's still a little warm. But yeah. Probably just gonna drain the oil out of it. And um try and locate that pretty bad leak up front. Part of me wants to deal with it because I've never really I don't have much experience with that. 
And most of me really wants to tear it down and fix that. But I think first we're going to take off the head gasket or the head and see how it looks in there. And then that I'll judge. Just based on that, I can judge a little bit better if this engine's worth taking apart and fixing that seal. Not like replacing that seal even that hard. It's not even really that hard, honestly. Um, but it's not fun. Um, but yeah, so, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. And, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more. Peace.